I took this photo uh, back uh, in March of 2011, uh, just after I'd come round from surgery on both of my knees uh, at the same time. A year or two earlier, I was trying to lose some weight. I'd started uh, working out, running, cycling, and I developed this pain in my knees that gradually got worse and worse. I went to see the doctor, uh, who then referred me on to the surgeon, which led to me having these uh, arthroscopic procedures uh, that you can see uh, in the picture behind me. Six months down the line, though, it was pretty clear that the surgery hadn't actually solved the problem, though. I was still uh, in just as much pain uh, as I was before, and I still couldn't exercise. And I only found out why when I met this lady. Her name's Nicole Parsons. She was a sports rehab expert uh, who explained to me, to my shock and horror, that the problem had nothing whatsoever to do with my knees. Uh, from my shoulders, down through my back, into my hips uh, and glutes, all of these different muscle groups uh, were imbalanced. My hips in particular were twisted this way, this way, and this way, uh, which meant that when I ran or squatted or anything like that, uh, it put tremendous strain uh, on that knee joint, which was what was causing the pain. But her point was fundamentally that no amount of intervention at the knee itself was actually going to solve the problem. What I needed to do was get these muscle groups rebalanced uh, and then the knee would take care of itself. And true to her word, that's exactly what happened, and I was back up and running uh, again in no time. Now, it struck me during uh, one of my sessions with Nicole that what I was experiencing here with my knees and hips was pretty similar to what we often uh, experience at work. Whenever we face a problem or a challenge, we rush in uh, and try and solve it right there and then, often without thinking uh, about what the real root cause might be. Corporations every year spend millions and millions of dollars optimizing or improving certain parts of their operation that don't really translate into real world uh, improvements in their performance. Now, why is that? Well, we can trace this back to two fundamental challenges, which are features, if you like, of the modern workplace. The first of which is that we're all specialists, right? So we're all experts, but we're only experts in one small area of the business, which is what we're looking at, right? So the knee surgeon is an expert in knees and he looks at the knees and he tries to solve the problem there. But the problems in the hips and glutes, he misses it. And that happens all the time in a, in a corporate environment as well. We can miss things because we can't see past the horizon line of our expertise or our department. The second, uh, which is kind of joined at the hip, uh, if you like, with the first, is reductionism. A business is an interconnected whole. It's a system, just like the body. Right? You can't change one part of it without it having an impact somewhere else, a bit like squeezing a balloon. And even though that makes intuitive sense to most people, when it comes to making decisions, that's not really how we act. We don't really take a systems uh, approach to decision making in business. Instead, what we do is we break things down and we uh, analyze more than we synthesize and we treat these things in isolation from one another. Now, it's easy to see how if you combine these two things together, uh, if everybody is a specialist who's acting in their own best interest, uh, and if we're not really thinking often about the broader consequences of our decisions, it's easy to see how we can end up with totally unforeseen, unintended, or undesirable consequences. Right? And having seen the problems caused by these two challenges playing out time after time after time in all sorts of different businesses, I wanted to do some research and see what people had to say about solving them. Right? What do people in business have to say about applying systems thinking? to problem solving and decision making. And it turned out actually uh, surprisingly little, in part because most academics and experts are themselves specialists, right? What I found instead is that strategy and decision making as a discipline hasn't really changed that much uh, in decades. Even though the environment has become increasingly volatile or dynamic or fast paced, we're still using the same kind of slow, cumbersome tools to make decisions that we have done for years. So I began to think, what would solutions to these challenges look like if we were to tackle them head on? What would they look like in an ideal world? And I concluded that the solution to this problem of specialism would be to have some kind of master model that allowed anyone in a business to see all of the factors that determined whether they succeeded or failed, not just the one or two that relate to their discipline. I thought that would be a pretty major breakthrough. The solution to this problem of reductionist decision-making would be if we had some kind of holistic framework that allowed us to consider the broader impact of the decisions that we're making on the business as a whole. And finally, I thought it would be great if we had some kind of modern, lean or more agile approach to making uh, strategic decisions that not only allowed us to make far better decisions, but to do that uh, in far less time. 
Well, after working away on this uh, for a good five years, we were able to provide a solution to all three of these in one. The result of which uh, is this, the grid. It's a book, it's a framework, it's an approach uh, to decision making. It's a way of life, perhaps, uh, if you're me. Uh, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. I'm also going to share some of the things that I've learned uh, since we released this around August of last year and then answer uh, any questions you might have at the end, which I'm, I'm really looking forward to. So what is the grid? It's a simple tool for making better business decisions, really, whoever you are and whatever the size uh, or shape of your organization. What makes it unique or different from other approaches is that it's really the first uh, model or tool that allows you to see your business from above, like almost from a space station view. See it as an interconnected uh, whole. And that brings with it several pretty powerful benefits. First of which, you can spot opportunities and risks that you might otherwise have missed, which is a, a good thing. It can help you prioritize and make smarter trade-offs. We've all got finite resources, so how we use those uh, and how we make those trade-offs or prioritize uh, the things that we pursue can be extremely important. It allows us to collaborate more effectively with people from different disciplines because it gives us a common reference point uh, that we can use uh, when we're making decisions or having those conversations, uh, which should ultimately lead uh, to much clearer and more compelling business cases. Another way of thinking about this, and of course the reason why I've been invited here today, is that it can help you systematically identify uh, the most promising opportunities uh, to innovate. It can help you refine those new product or service ideas that you're working on and shift the odds of project success uh, more into your favor. 